In this video, we're going to talk about erosion and the types of erosion that occur on Earth. Most erosion on Earth is directly or indirectly caused by water. That includes rain and rivers. When rivers pick up sediment and carry it along with them, it's called load. Now, there are many different ways that rivers erode. They can carry it in load. They can slide rocks along the bottom. They can bounce rocks or sand along their riverbeds, something called saltation. But there is something about rivers and erosion. There is a relationship. The relationship is the faster a river moves, the more it can erode and the bigger the sediment size it can pick up. So for example, a river moving at one centimeter per second or an ocean wave would could only pick up mostly silt and clay. Whereas a river moving at 100 centimeters per second could pick up clay, silt, sand, and even pebbles. A river moving at 300 centimeters per second could pick up clay, silt, sand, pebbles, cobbles, and even boulders. So the more force a river has, the more sediment it can pick up. Now, there are other types of erosion that do not include water. So all erosion on Earth is caused by gravity. Without gravity, sediment and sand and silt and clay would not want to move downhill. It would just stay in place. However, not all erosion requires direct involvement of water. Water does help other types of erosion, including landslides, rock falls, and volcanoes, but it does not have to be there to actually have these types of erosion. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the other types of erosion now. We'll start with landslides. So landslides are movement of rock, debris, and soil downhill. In order to be considered a landslide, it has to have soil in it. Now, water can help trigger a landslide. It can lubricate the soil underneath. It can add extra weight to the soil, overcoming the soil's strength but it does not specifically require water. Usually it is involved with it. Um, most landslides happen where the soil is made of sand, or sorry, silt and clay. And that's just because silt and clay are weaker than solid rock or sand would be, like sandstone. Now, some places, landslide, they cause a lot of property damage because houses are built right next to steep slopes. So to avoid landslide damage, the best thing to do is to not be near a steep slope because without the slope, you won't have the erosion. Lower slope, lower erosion, less chance for a landslide. Now, there is another type of erosion that does not require water, and that would be rockfall. Now, like landslides, water could help lubricate the rocks and help move them downhill, but it is not specifically required to have water for a rockfall. All you need is rocks and gravity. So when rocks fall downhill due to the force of gravity, that is erosion called rockfall. Now, rockfall is obviously associated with steep slopes. Without the steep slopes, the rocks would not have the energy required to move downhill quickly. Now, ice can erode in two different ways. The first way is called freeze-thaw cycles. So water gets into cracks in rocks or soil, it freezes, moves the soil a little bit downhill, and then it thaws out again until the next night. That's a pretty slow process considering it only happens once per day. Now, glaciers are another type of erosion, and they can move a whole lot more soil. So anytime you see a glacier and you see those dark streaks inside the glacier, that's the glacier picking up sediment and rocks and moving them downhill. Now, glaciers can hold a lot of sediment, but the thing is, glaciers move pretty slowly. And so because they move pretty slowly, they're not the fastest type of erosion on Earth. Now, water still wins in that category, but they still do move a lot of sediment. And when they end, they have terminal moraines, all that sediment is dumped at the end of the glacier. It could be dumped into the water or it could be dumped on the land. It just depends on where the glacier terminates. Now, volcanoes, you normally think of volcanoes as depositing sediment, and most of the time volcanoes do deposit sediment. But when volcanoes erupt explosively, they can also erode by moving sediment away from the, where they erupted. So this might be an example here. When the volcano exploded, a lot of ash and rock is thrown out, and technically that could be erosion. Volcanoes also could lead, with the help of water, to lahars. So lahars are mud flows, mainly made of ash, water, and other debris that flows downhill just like a river. Uh, volcanoes can help contribute to that. Volcanoes also tend to have steep slopes, which could lead to rockfall or landslides as well. So volcanoes are tangentially related to a lot of types of erosion. Now, wind is probably the second most powerful type of erosion on Earth, or at least the second most common. Wind can erode in three different ways. Just like rivers, it can saltation, have saltation, which is bouncing. So it can bounce sand along the ground. 
And just like rivers, it can suspend some sediment in the air or in the water for rivers. That usually happens for smaller sediments like clay and silt. Now, there is one final type, and it's creep for wind. It's for a sediment that is too big to be picked up by the wind itself. So something like this sediment right down here, instead of being bounced in the air or flung into the air as suspension, it kind of just rolls along the bottom or creeps along the ground. So that's the three ways that wind can erode or remove sediment. Now here's the thing about wind erosion. 95% of wind erosion actually occurs within three feet of the ground. And that's because 95% of sand that is saltationed or bounced, it, bounced into the air, 95% of that sand only goes about three feet up in the air. It can't go higher because wind just doesn't have enough energy to move sand higher than about three feet or about one meter. So because of that, most erosion has to happen really close to where the sediment it is, really close to the ground. So something like a building or a skyscraper is not going to have a bunch of wind erosion really high up just because there's only suspended dirt that high up.